Live from San Francisco, California, it's theCUBE. Covering the IBM Chief Data Officer Summit. Brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to Fisherman's, Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco, everybody. My name is Dave Vellante, and you're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We go out to events, we extract the signal from the noise. We're here at the IBM CDO event. This is the 10th anniversary of this event. Caitlin Halfordy is here. She's the Director of AI Accelerator and Client Success at IBM. Caitlin, great to see you again. Thank wow, you. 10 years, amazing, isn't it? <laughs> thank you, thank you. And Carlo Apoglesi is here, who uh, is the Program Director for Data and AI at IBM. Good thank to see you, you again, my nice friend. Thanks for coming on. Two CUBE alums. Wow, this is 10 years. And I think theCUBE has covered probably eight of these now. Oh yeah. Kind of we bounce between San Francisco and Boston, yeah. two great places for, for CDOs, good places to have intimate events, but, and you're taking it global. Yes. I understand. Yes. Congratulations, congratulations on the promotion. Thank you. It's all going. <laughs> Thank you so yeah. much. Um, so we, as you know, well, are, well know, we started our Chief Data Officer Summits in San Francisco, here in San Francisco in 2014. Right. So this is our 10th one, we do two a year. Uh, we found we really have a unique cohort of clients uh, that join us, about 140 in San Francisco in the spring, 140 in Boston in, um, in the fall, and we're here celebrating the uh, 10th, 10th summit. So Carlo, talk about your role, and then let's get into how you guys you know, work together, how you hand the baton yeah. off, and <laughs> so then we'll get to the client piece. Yeah, so, so I lead uh, the Data Sense Elite team, which is a group within our product development, uh, working side by side with clients, really to understand their needs, as well as develop use cases on our platform and tools, and make sure we um, are able to deliver on those. And then we work closely with the CDO team, the global CDO team, on best practices, uh, what patterns they're seeing from an architecture perspective, make sure that our platform's really incorporating that stuff. And if, and if I recall, the data science elite team is it's pre-sales, correct? Yep. And well, well, it could be post-sales. It could be post-sales. Post yeah, okay. it, it really depends on the client. Um, so it could be prior to uh, them buying software, or after they bought the software. If they need the help, we can also come in. Okay, so it's, so it can be a for pay service, is that correct or? Yeah, or we, it can be for pay or, and sometimes we do it based on just our relationship with the client. And it's kind of a mix then, yeah. right? And okay, so you're learning, the client's learning. Absolutely. They're obviously good, good customers and yeah. so you want to treat them right. Now how do you guys work together? Maybe Caitlin, you yeah. can explain the two organizations? We're often the early testers, early adopters mm -hmm. of some of the uh, capabilities. And so what we'll do is we'll test, we'll iterate, we'll prove it out at scale internally using IBM itself as an example. And then as we build out the capability, work with Carlo and his team to really drive that into product and drive that into market. And we share a lot of client relationships where CDOs come to us, they want advice and counsel on best practices uh, across the organization. They're looking for latest uh, AI applications to deploy, deploy in their own environment. And so we can capture a lot of that feedback and some of the market user testing, uh, prove that out using IBM as an example, and then work with you to really commercialize and bring it to market in the most efficient manner. Yep. So yeah. you were talking in, this morning, you had a picture up of the first CDO event, no internet, no Wi-Fi, <laughs> in the basement. <laughs> yeah. Love it. So how has this evolved in, from, from a theme standpoint? What do you, what are the patterns that we should sure. be Sure, so to? when we started this, it was really in response to um, primarily financial services sector, regulatory requirements, trying to get data right to meet those um, regulatory and compliance uh, initiatives. Defensive posture certainly weren't driving transformation within their enterprises, and what I've seen is a couple of those core elements are still key for us, so data governance and data management, and some of those you know, security access controls, those are always going to be important. But what we're finding is CDOs more and more have expanded scope of responsibilities within their enterprise, they're looked at as, as a leader, they're no longer sitting within a CIO function, they're either a peer or you know, working in partnership with, and they're driving enterprise-wide you know, initiatives for, the, for their enterprises and organizations, which has been great to see. So we all remember when you know, Hal Varian declared data science was going to be the you know, number one job, and it actually kind of has become, yeah, I think I saw somewhere, maybe it was in Glassdoor, it was anointed the, the top job, which is kind of cool to see. Um, so, what are you seeing with customers, uh, Carlo? You, you guys, you have these, these blueprints, you're now applying them, accelerating different industries. You mentioned healthcare yep. this morning. Um, what are some of those industry accelerators and, and how is that actually coming to fruition? Yeah, so some of the things we're seeing is, uh, for speaking of financial clients, um, we, we go into a lot of them, we do these one-on-one -on -one engagements, we build them from custom, we co-create these engineering solutions on our platform, 
and we're seeing patterns, patterns around different use cases that are coming up over and over again. And, and the one thing about data science and AI, it's difficult to develop a solution because everybody's data is different, everybody's business is different. So um, what we're starting to do is build these, we can't just build a widget that's going to solve a problem because then you have to force your data into that and we're seeing that that doesn't really work. So building a, a platform for these clients with these accelerators, which are a set of core code, source code, notebooks, uh, industry models and terms, um, as well as dashboards that allow them to quickly uh, build out these use cases around a, a, you know, a churn or, or segmentation um, and, um, and some, you know, some other models. We can run out of the box, provide the models, provide the know-how with the, uh, the source code as well as a way for them to train them, deploy them, and operationalize them in their organization. So That's kind of what we're doing. You're priming the pump. Priming the pump. We call them, they're, they're, right now we're doing client insights for uh, wealth management and we're doing that for FSS and they come right out of the box of our Cloud Pack for Data platform. Um, you can quickly click an install button, and in there you'll get the sample data files, you get notebooks, you get industry terms, your governance capability, as well as deployed dashboards and models. So t talk more about Cloud Pack for Data. What's inside of that? Cloud Pack for Data is a collection of microservices, um, and it includes a lot of things that we bring to market to help customers with their AI journey. Things from like data ingestion collection, to all the way to uh, AI model development, from building your models to deploying them to actually infusing them in your business process with bias detection or integration. Um, and we have a lot of capability part of the platform. So it's actually tooling. It's not just sort of uh, sort of how-to PDFs. Is that is that no, right? No, no, it's yeah. tool. It's an entire platform. Um, so I, so the platform itself has everything you need in an organization to kind of go from an idea to data ingestion and governance and management, all the way to model training and development and deployment and to integration into your business process. Now, Caitlin, um, in the early days of the CDO, uh, mm -hmm. you saw the CDO emerge in, in healthcare, financial services, and government. Yeah. And then now yeah. it's kind of gone mainstream to the point where we had Mark Clare on, who's the head of data enablement at AstraZeneca. AstraZeneca, and he said, I'm not taking the CDO title. You know, because I'm all about data enablement, and yes. the CDO, you know, title has sort of evolved. But yep. what have you seen? It's got clearly gone mainstream. Yep. Um, what are you seeing in terms of adoption of that that role and its impact on organizations? So a couple of trends has been interesting, um, both domestically and internationally as well. So we're seeing a lot of uh, growth outside of the U.S. So we did our first inaugural summit in Tokyo in Japan. Um, there's a number of data leaders in Japan that are really eager to jumpstart their transformation initiatives. Um, also did our first Dubai summit, Middle East and Africa. Mm. Um, I'll be in South Africa next month at another CDO summit. Um, and what I'm seeing is outside of North America, a lot of activity and interest in creating and enabling a CDO-like capability, data leader-like. Um, and some of these guys, I think, are going to leapfrog ahead. I think they're going to just absolutely Absolutely, um, jump jump ahead, and in parallel, those traditional industries. You know, there's new federal legislation coming down um, by year end for most federal agencies to appoint a chief data officer. So, you know, Washington D.C. is is hopping right now. We're getting uh, a number of agencies requesting advice and counsel on how to set up the office, how to be successful. I think there's some, you know, great opportunity in those traditional industries, and also seeing it, uh, you know, outside the U.S. and and, and cross uh, non-traditional. So when you say jump ahead, you mean jump ahead of where maybe some of the U.S. Absolutely. You know, best practice. Absolutely. Yeah, and I'm seeing a trend where you know a lot of CDOs are moving. They're, they're really closer to the line of business, right? Yep. They're moving outside of technology, but they have to be technology savvy. They have a team of engineers and data scientists, so they're, they're, it's really an important role in every organization. And we're see, I'm seeing it for every client I go to. It's a little different, but uh, you're right. It's it's definitely an up and coming role, and it's very important. For, especially for digital transformation. Is, is the, oh, go ahead. I was going to say one of the ways you know our teams really partner well together, I think, is we can source some of these um, in, in terms of enabling that you know acceleration and leapfrog. You know, yeah. what are those pain points or use cases um, in, in the traditional data management space? You know, the metadata. So uh, the I think you talked with Stephen earlier yeah. about how we're um, doing some automated metadata generation and really using AI to um, 
instead of manually having to label and tag that, you know, we're able to generate about 85% of our labels internally um, and drive that into existing product that yep. Carlo's using and our clients are saying, hey, we're spending, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars and we've got teams of, uh, massive teams of people, manual work, and so we're able to recognize it, adopt something like that for us internally and then work with you guys to bring it Yeah, absolutely, market. think of every ETL developer out there that has to go figure out what this data is. If you have a tool, which we're trying to incorporate in the platform, based on the guidance from the CDO, global CDO team, we can automatically create that metadata, automatically ingest it and provide it into the platform so that data scientists can start to get value out of it quickly. So we heard Martin Schroeder talk about sort of digital trade and public policy, and he said had, there were three things. Uh, free flow of data, yep. uh, unless it doesn't make sense, like personal information. Uh, prevent data localization mandates, yep. uh, and then protect algorithms and, and source code, which is an IP protection thing. So I'm interested in, in how your customers are, are reacting to that framework. I presume the protect the algorithms and source code, IP, that's near and dear, right? Yeah. They want to make sure that you're not taking models and then giving it to their competitors. Absolutely, right? and we talk about that every time we go in there and we work on projects. Um, what's the IP, you know? You know, how do we manage this? And you know, what, what we bring to the table with the accelerators is to help them jumpstart them, right? And even though it's kind of our IP, we create it, but we give it to them, and then what they de derive from that when they incorporate their data, which is their IP, and create new models, that's mm -hmm. then their IP. So those are, those are complicated questions, and every company is a little different on what they're worried about with that. So, um, but many banks, we give them all the IP uh, to make sure that they're comfortable and uh, especially in financial services. Um, but some other spaces, it's very competitive and, and they're not as worried about it because it's uh, a known space. A lot of the algorithms we use are all open source. Mm -hmm. They're known algorithms. So there's not a lot of problem there. Yeah, um, but it's how you apply them to get exactly insights. That's exactly right, how you right. apply them. In that boundary of what is IP, what's <laughs> not, it gets kind of fuzzy. And so we encourage our clients a lot of times to, to drive that for yes. the organization. You know, for us internally, GDPR readiness, it was occurring at a business unit level, functional area. So it was, you know, we weren't where we needed to be in terms of uh, achieving compliance. And we as a CDO office took ownership of that across the business and, and got it where we needed to be. And so we often encourage our yeah. clients to take ownership of something like that and use it as an opportunity to differentiate. Yeah. And I talk about that all the time with clients. You know, their data is important to them. Them training models with that data for some new, making new decisions is their unique value prop and their yeah, IP. Absolutely. So, that, so we, we encourage them to make sure they're aware of that. Don't just throw their data in any canned um, service out there, model, because they could be giving away their intellectual property and, and it's important to understand that. So, as, I mean, that, that's a complicated one, right? The IP yeah. piece, and the other two seem to be even tougher in some regards, like the free flow of data. I can see a lot of governments not wanting the free flow of data, but, and, and then the, the client is in the middle. Right? Yeah. They're like, hey, uh, I don't know, you know what to do. The <laughs> government is going to adjudicate, not yeah. me. Right. What's that conversation like? Are they, the example that he gave was, or maybe it was Interpol, that if it's, if it's information about baggage claims, you can, you can you know, use the, the blockchain. Yeah. encrypt it, and then only see the data at the other end. So that was actually, I thought, a good example. Why do you want to restrict that flow of data? But if it's personal information, keep it in country. But yeah. how is that conversation going with clients? You know, it, those can evolve depending on the country, <laughs> right? And where you're at right, in, right. in the industry. Yeah, but um, even some Western countries are yeah, pretty strict about that stuff, Absolutely, right? and, um, and this is why we've created a platform that allows for data virtualization. Uh, we use you know, Kubernetes and technologies under the covers so that mm. you can manage that in different locations. You can manage it across a hybrid of data centers or a hybrid of uh, public cloud vendors. And it allows you to still have one business application and you can kind of you know, do some of that separation um, and even separation of data. So there's, 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 a, there's an approach there. Um, you know, but you got to do a balance it, you got to balance it between innovation, digital transformation, and how much you want to you know, govern. So govern's important, and then, you know, but for some projects, we may want to just quickly prototype. So there's a balance there too. Well that data virtualization tech is interesting because it gets to the other piece, which was prevent data localization mandates. But if there is a mandate, and we know that some countries aren't going Absolutely. to relax that mandate, you have a, a technical solution for that. An architecture that will support that, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a big investment for us right now, and we're, we're doing a lot of work in that space. Obviously, with Red Hat, you saw our partnership or acquisition, that, so that's been... Red Hat, yeah, I heard something about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's important for us. Yeah. That's 
That's, that's a big part of chapter two. Yeah. All right, we'll give you the final word, Caitlin, on uh, the spring. I guess it's not spring, it's technically the summer uh, <laughs> right. CDO event. Uh, no, it's been a great first day. So we kicked off today, we've got a full set of client panels tomorrow. Um, we've got some announcements around our metadata that I mentioned. Risk Insights is a really cool offering we'll be talking more about. Um, we also have Cognitive Support. This is another one our clients said they really wanted to, to help with some of their support uh, backend systems. So a lot of exciting announcements, um, new thought leadership coming out. Uh, it's been a great event and looking forward to the next uh, next day. Well, I love the fact that you guys have, have tied you know, data science into the, the C-suite role. You guys have done a great job, I think better than anybody in terms of, uh, of, uh, of really advocating for the chief data officer. And this is a great event because it's peers talking to peers, a lot of private conversations going on. So congratulations on all the success and continued success worldwide. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dave. All right, you're welcome. <laughs> Keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this short break. We have a panel coming up. This is Dave Vellante. You're watching theCUBE from IBM CDO. We'll be right back.